Hi right, guys, um, hope everybody's staying safe during this pandemic and I want to thank all those essential workers that are going out there every day and uh, kind of risking their lives to make sure all of us have what we need. So appreciate that and thank you very much. Um, in any case, uh, I think uh, on next few videos I'm probably just going to be doing little things here and there that I've been meaning to do and just putting off and uh, why not just make a, a how-to video out of it. Um, so today's video is going to be about replacing the uh, power seat switch on my Mercedes E550. Um, I'll, I'll show you uh, very shortly here. Uh, basically it broke uh, one of the adjuster buttons and I'm going to get those uh, replaced and uh, show you how you go about the, doing that. Alright so here we are in the car and basically this is uh, what's broken. So. Um, the uh, the power seat buttons for Mercedes are um, you basically got three sections. Uh, you got the the bottom of the seat, the back, and then the headrest. And the headrest button, when I was getting out of the car one day, my jacket got caught on the button, just broke it right off. So uh, I'm gonna be replacing that. Um, and since I have I looked for these online, so it basically is a switch assembly comes with this and the memory buttons, and it's obviously inserted from behind, so you gotta remove the whole door panel. Mm -hmm. um, I kept looking, I found these used for like $125. Um, I found some that were more, some that were less, uh, but what I ended up doing is I, I found on eBay a whole door panel, complete door panel with all the switches, so I'm also gonna be replacing these because this, the black is wearing off, so um it kind of makes the car look kind of used and abused and uh, i'm planning on replacing that as well um so let me show you what i got on ebay all right so i ended up buying this whole door panel for 90 dollars uh that's with free delivery or included delivery it's a different color than my car my car is all black um but it came with all the switches I need. So it's got all these switches. It's actually got the, the door, the power door, I'm sorry, the power window and mirror switches as well. And the uh, the trunk release switch. So if I ever have any other pieces that I need to replace, I have uh, them all here. And uh, I'm also gonna use this to kind of study how to remove the door panel. So when I turn this around, it looks like you basically have um, these two bolts uh, that need to be removed. And then, let me just uh, grab the camera here. Uh, you see these orange uh, snap clips right here? So there seems to be uh, around the, the leading door edge, the bottom edge, up around to the back edge. Um, see, looks like there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight in total. Um, then to, to figure out how to remove these, if you turn the door around, it looks like there, there's a, a panel here and it gives you access to the two major bolts uh, and this just snaps in. It looks like you, you lift it from the bottom to get out and then you can start it back this way. Um, the only other thing that I'm seeing here, um, it looks like there's a, um, this little hole here. I gotta see what that is on the car. Maybe that's something that protrudes out of the door. So instead of being a female, it's a male or, or vice versa. And, uh, and then I think there's uh, something else here on this side. Uh, there's like a, a, a tab with a round with a hole. Not exactly sure how that engages the, the car, but I think the trick is going to be to remove these two bolts and then just with a pry tool, just work our way around the door to try to remove it. All right, so uh, let's try to remove the panel out of the car. Uh, but I think before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, disconnecting these switches. So if I know how to remove them here, I'll realize how to remove them on the car. All right, so there's a uh, fiber insulator uh, and it looks like it's hot staked 
um, to the door panel. Hot staking is when you melt. Um, so it's like a little waffle pattern. It's like when you melt material onto another material. And um, so I guess the only way around that is to kind of tear it. So when you do this to your car panel, you're, this is going to be loose. So you might have to find an alternate way to reattach it. Maybe some double sided tape or something like that. Um, so I could see here, there is my door switch. I could tell by the shape. That's the, the power seat button and that's the memory seat button. So it looks like these are just held on with uh, snap-in tabs. So it looks like you could remove the whole assembly. Um, looks like you could remove the whole assembly and, uh, and then separate that further by separating the power sw uh, switch from the uh, um, the power seat from the uh, from the window switch. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start looking at that and see how is the best way to remove that without breaking anything. Looks like I have to remove um, uh, this window trim that goes around the window. Uh, I think it just snaps in place because I could see it just has these tabs here. But I'm gonna have to lower the window, I think, to make it easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This uh, speaker cover was pretty easy. Basically, you uh, you wanna pry it off from this edge here, um, this long edge here, and towards you this way because this uh, bottom tab is. Uh, the one that you don't you want to do last basically and that just tucks on there All right, so on the door panel, I remember me mentioning, I'm not sure what holds this. There must be something that comes out of the door itself. 
um, so I've come across that here now, um, basically right there, and it looks like it's just some sort of a, a special plastic fastener that has like a um, um, like an insert. So I think what you got to do with these is you got to grab a needle nose pliers, pull out that little insert, and then you should be able to pull out the whole clip. Once you pull out that insert, there's these little tabs inside that you gotta kind of flex out of the way. Pretty tricky fastener, but it's basically out. So you could kind of see the little barbs um, that lock in place. So you want to be careful not to break this part. It's probably the most complex part of the whole door removal. All right, so when you're removing the door panel, you're gonna have to disconnect a couple of plugs. This is the this door speaker plug. I shouldn't say the door speaker because the door speaker is actually mounted on the door, but the door panel has the Twitter, the tweeter, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Turn this around to show you. Basically, there's this little guy right here. So you have to disconnect the plug that plugs into here. And you gotta disconnect these two plugs. They're color coded, so it's very easy to make sure you put them back the right way. But uh, they plug into this junction box here, right there. Um, and they have a dot, you can see like a magenta dot. Let me move the camera out so, See there, there's a, a blue dot, move the wires out of the way, or cyan, whatever you want to call it, right there, and a magenta dot, so you know which the plugs, or the, the way they plug back in, and then the other thing you got to remove is the power lock uh, cable. So this basically has like a, a spade that feeds into the door handle. Um, and that's basically it. So, and you gotta lift it up. You gotta lift it up because part of the door tucks on the top of the uh, sheet metal here. That's basically it. All right, uh, what I'll do, since I didn't put a lot of detail on how to remove the, the power, the, the door cable, I'll, I'll try to show how it goes in so that way you'll have a little bit of an idea how to remove it. But basically, there's a sleeve here the cable feeds in there first and then you, you pull the uh, the little uh, attachment and you insert it into this little piece here. The plastic piece looks like a crown. So um, in any case, um, now we're gonna have to go ahead and remove the insulation. I'm still not sure how to put this back on. Maybe I'll just use some sort of glue. I'm gonna see if I have some rubber cement laying around and I'll just use that. Uh, I'm gonna tuck this under here so I can work. And here are my switches. So let's go ahead and remove those. And since you already saw the removal process, I'll just do a, um, a time lapse on that one. All right, so uh, I'm gonna use some uh, VHB tape, which is basically a very high bond tape. Um, it's similar to that to that uh, tape that you see on the, uh, basically what keeps like spoilers on and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna use a few squares of this stuff. Um, and that should be enough to keep the panel up for, um, you know, once once the panel is snapped into place, that, that's not gonna fall down anyway. Um, the idea is just to keep it up. Um, so that it doesn't fall down while they're installing it. Okay, so um, 
here are my new switches ready to install well not new sorry this is the old one uh, don't want to make that mistake uh, so basically these should just snap into place should be super easy um, Installation is just the reverse process of removal, but I did want to show you this detail. So um, obviously I'm, I already took it out. I'm going to show you how to put it back in. So you'll know that it'll be the reverse, but that's the cable that comes out of the car. Uh, so you want to stretch this part, feed it through that loop there, and then insert this into that white clip, this little nub here into that white clip until you hear a snapping action. Basically, now if you put the door handle, you can see how it actuates. All right, so now we just gotta connect these plugs here and the speaker, and we should be ready to get this back on. Okay, everything's installed you can see everything's working obviously that one doesn't lock because the door is open but um, here's the seats everything's good see here. and if I put memory press one you can see it goes back to the memory so everything's working so that's basically it um, again, the hardest part is obviously removing the door panel, but uh, I was lucky I had the, the I, since I bought the whole panel, I could just see the hardware that was involved and I didn't really have to guess at much except maybe this portion here and, and the, the door frame, but that was about it. Thanks again for watching. Um, again, I'm just going to be doing videos on these little uh, things that I need to catch up on uh, on my cars. I think... Uh, the next video will either be working on uh, installing a USB port on the Acti Mini truck or maybe I'll start working on the spoiler for uh, the Maserati. So I am going to, um, or the plan is for me to mount this lip spoiler here. It's designed for a Mustang, but I'm going to make some modifications to make it work. Um, so guys, thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there and uh, please, please like and subscribe. Thank you.